By now you've heard that the way we're living is filling up our atmosphere with carbon dioxide. As a result, the planet's warming. Heat waves and floods are more likely to be extreme and people's lives will get tougher. And the more we learn about climate change, the more risks we uncover. Since we started burning fossil fuels, the ocean has absorbed about half of all the CO2 we humans have put out. That's why it's called the planet's biggest carbon sink. Now this is good because it's kept a lot of CO2 out of the atmosphere. But as the ocean warms, it takes up less and less CO2. And with all that CO2 in the sea, scientists are shedding light on, well, an ocean of problems. Ready for the first big problem? Some sea creatures like clams, oysters, and coral, their shells and skeletons are getting weaker. Okay, you've got bigger problems than easy to crack clams? Maybe not if you're among the one in seven people who get most of their protein from seafood. Or if you understand how unstable the world would be with a billion more hungry people. What's weakening the shells? Well, these little creatures are going about their lives scooping up molecules called carbonate ions to be the building blocks of their shells. But when CO2 reacts with seawater, it releases hydrogen ions, which compete with shells for carbonate. With more hydrogen ions floating around in the ocean, our little friends have to spend more energy building their shells and have less energy for finding food. That means it's harder to grow and more will die off before they get big. So the fish that eat the clams or live among the coral will have a harder time surviving, meaning the fish that dine on them won't have enough to eat. And so we won't have enough to eat. Remember those pesky hydrogen ions generated by more CO2? They don't just take away the carbonate ions that these little clams need. They also make the ocean more acidic. It's already become 30% more acidic since we started spewing all this CO2, and it could get much worse. We could change the ocean's chemistry so much that shells actually start to dissolve. That means if we don't turn this problem around, your great-grandkids might think of reefs the way you think of a dodo bird. And with one in four ocean species living in coral reef ecosystems, weaker coral could threaten the foundation of the whole ocean food chain. But why panic, right? Life always seems to find a way to adapt, but it needs time. In a few decades, we might make the oceans more acidic than they've been in 20 million years. It's hard to imagine any ecosystem quickly adapting to that big of a change. But things don't have to get that bad. We've started this problem, and we're going to fix it, beginning at its source, carbon dioxide from burning fossil fuels. Learn more at aspace.org. Welcome to C.5. Here we're going to look at how there is a heterogeneous equilibrium between concentration of atmospheric carbon dioxide and aqueous carbon dioxide in our oceans depicted here. So obviously carbon dioxide, a big uh, concern because it's a greenhouse gas. And we actually have our ocean here that is one of our major carbon sinks. Um, so we want to understand first why on earth does carbon dioxide actually go into water. Why is it soluble in water? Well, remember CO2, we have oxygens on either side that have lone pairs and that can form then hydrogen bonds with the water, the hydrogens in the water. So it is quite soluble. So here we're showing sort of an equilibrium where we have the carbon dioxide um, dissolving uh, and also some being released at the same time and that just happens as a sort of balance and right now is still absorbing a lot of carbon dioxide. So the aqueous here shows us in the ocean and what happens now is it reacts with the water to form carbonic acid. So carbonic acid is a weak acid and obviously that causes what we call ocean acidification. It causes a pH level of our oceans to actually drop. So this is a bit of a problem the hydrogen carbonate actually dissociates as a weak acid into hydrogen ions and hydrogen carbonate and that hydrogen carbonate can further dissociate into another hydrogen ion and a carbonate ion. So what we end up here are some extra hydrogen ions and that extra acidity actually inhibits the shell growth of many of the marine species that have shells. And so if they can't develop their shells uh, and they often form the base of, of the food chains, um, in many cases of the lower parts of it, um, that can cause a lot of repercussions in the larger species as well. So we're actually monitoring this and the early alarms are quite, um, quite serious. 
It also causes some reproductive order disorders in some of the fish. So to put it in perspective, um, before the, the extra CO2 we pumped into the atmosphere um, was there, the past 300 million years, our oceans had a stable pH of 8.2. And now, just in the last couple hundred years since the Industrial Revolution, that has decreased by 0.1. Now you might think, oh, 0.1, well, that means nothing. Well, you have to remember uh, and make a connection to what the pH scale is. And that's a logarithmic scale. So a change in 0.1 is actually quite significant. And actually this 0.1 represents a 25% increase in acidity. So it's quite a serious issue. We really need to stop putting carbon dioxide into the air.